Hello gamers! Today we are looking at view from Mount Holyoke, Northampton, Massachusetts after a thunderstorm, or more commonly known as the Oxbow. It's a painting created in the 19th century by Thomas Cole that relates to the concept of manifest destiny. Despite being an American painter, he was actually born in England. He was popular for painting a lot of landscape pieces and is the founder of the Hudson River School which is not an educational building, but a group of landscape painters that continued throughout the 19th century. Yes, he actually didn't start his career as a landscape painter, but as an itinerant portraitist. After seven years of itinerant painting, he moved out of Ohio due to the education not being available to him. He then moved to New York and wanted to come up with a goal, a passion that was more reasonable for himself. Cole eventually came to the conclusion that he wanted to create landscape paintings. He taught himself through the words and deep knowledges of only one book. Yes, a single book. Don't cut me off. But yes, only one book. The book was William Oram's Precepts and Observations on the Art of Coloring in Landscaping, published in the year 1810. This was the book that guided him throughout his entire career. Cole's popularity actually came from exposure to another artist, John Trumbull, who was famous for painting the Declaration of Independence painting, hung in the United States Capitol Rotunda. Trumbull believed that Cole was a very talented painter and took him under his wing. Trumbull quickly introduced Cole to plenty of wealthy and important men who then later became patrons of his artwork. The famous oxbow takes place at a simple bend of the Connecticut River, but it's so much more than that. It was very uncommon for landscape paintings to be nothing more than an imitation of the real life, but Cole wanted to embed some more meaning and symbolism into his painting. When looking at this piece, the first thing you notice is the diagonal separation, dividing the artwork into two sections, the upper right and the lower left. Another piece from the 250 that has a separation like this is Peter Bruegel's Hunters in the Snow. Likewise to Hunters in the Snow, the Oxbow shows a distinct diagonal visual contrast. Hunters in the Snow has a sudden change in foreground and background due to the hunters walking on a cliff. The Oxbow, on the other hand, contrasts a part of the land that is tamed and a part of the land that is wild and disorderly. It accomplishes this with the light and dark color scheme clashing on the horizontal separation both in the lines and on the clouds. This piece is actually representation of the Americas. More specifically, the concept of manifest destiny, where colonists believed they had a God-given right to settle westward. The left shows a raw piece of land, created by God and untouched by human hands. This land has a scarred and jagged appearance due to the harsh storms, which elicits feelings of danger, fear, and uncertainty from the viewer. And the right shows tamed land, morphed and cultivated by mankind to accommodate their needs. Unlike the left half, there is no storm. There is mostly a flat land, ruled over by agriculture and animals. And contrary to the left, there are many signs of human life, such as the smoke coming from the chimneys and the boats crossing the river. This contrast is not shown visually, but in the title of the painting itself, an oxbow refers to a U-shaped metal frame connected to a yoke that is fitted around an ox's neck so it can carry a plow for farming. This is a perfect example of mankind controlling and using nature to their gain, and it makes it a very appropriate name for this painting. The ox like many of other Cole's paintings, has small hints to Christianity. Looking into the far back, you can see light shining onto a hill which has Hebrew lettering etched into it. The letters roughly translate into Noah when read right side up, and upside down spells El Shaddai, which means the Almighty. All of the land on the right side of the painting being drenched in light suggests that Manifest Destiny was, in fact, God's plan. The two contrasts in the painting are also representative of the Louisiana Purchase made in 1803, when the Americans purchased and settled onto the westward territory. The right is the already settled east, and the left is untamed and newly obtained west land. In the untamed land, the artist actually inserts himself into his own painting. He's a little hard to spot. But you can see him painting this very painting, and he's looking directly at us. Can you see him? This little Easter egg of the artist painting themselves in can be seen in some other artworks in the 250, such as Diego Velasquez's Las Meninas, which was created prior to this painting. In both paintings, the painter looks as if they were stopped midway by someone and are staring directly at the viewer with their paintbrush still in hand. To the right of Cole are all of his belongings, an umbrella, a chair, and lastly his portfolio which also acts as a watermark for the painting. Which, we forgot to mention, is actually very large, standing at 51 and a half by 76 inches. Its large size suggests that it was almost entirely for the purpose of entertainment. He wanted people to have a fun time looking at these paintings while also 
embedding a deeper meaning within. He wanted Americans to have something pretty good to look at, some good old eye candy. <laughs> <laughs>